Welcome everyone to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host Scotty McCoy and I have an alumni from Friday the 13th Part 6 Jason Lives. I have Roger Rose and he played Steven in the movie. Hey Roger, how you doing? Hey, hey, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, what's that behind you? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was just telling them the story about when I was uh, younger and I was watching Friday the 13th and uh, Jason Voorhees turned off the uh, power in the movie and at the same time, exact same time, my power went out and that was a little freaky. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I have about uh, 10 questions for you. The first one is not related to Friday the 13th, but it's how did you get your start into acting? Uh, I only have nine answers, so pick one that you don't want. No, um, uh, I, well, it's actually, it has to do, uh, well, my, I can tell you as far as on camera, um, it, 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 one of the main things that started was with Friday the 13th part six. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, if you want to, I don't know what your next question is, if it's to do with that, it's sort of to do, I mean, I always... Took, I studied and I did some other TV shows and movies and things of that sort. But um, this really gave me a really good start. Okay. Uh, and, I'll, you know, if you, I could tell you or you could ask the next question, which could be about nudity. I don't know, but uh, either way. <laughs> well, the next question I got is uh, that you told me via email when we were discussing about your appearance on Slasher Scotty that uh, you had a story about how you got a job to be a part of Friday the 13th Part 6. So do you want to let us know what that story is? Yeah, so as you were saying about how did I get a start as an actor, so uh, as I said, I was doing stuff, but I became the very first, I'm, I'm, I have a pretty decent career in voiceover. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm a leopard seal on Happy Feet. I'm the guy on CBS who goes, the Big Bang Theory and, and CIS <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. But right. I, I, started, uh, I started getting voice work in horror movies and, uh, and really cheap Roger Corman movies. And what I mean by that is I was the death voice for every male. And uh, a woman named Pat Music with a female voice. Her her daughter is uh, on um, uh, her, Mae Whitman, if you know who Mae Whitman is. Anyway, so <clears throat> excuse me. So we uh, were doing. We one of our first gigs was uh, Reanimator and Reanimator Two. I was every zombie like, Bleh! and then uh, you know, <laughs> someone getting killed and hit and whatever. Right. And then I started getting uh, Roger Corman films where I would have a shootout with all five of myself. So the you know because <laughs> they would buy films from around the world, and so nobody spoke English. So I would put in all the uh, uh, different voices. One of my favorites is Savage Island with Linda Blair, where the guy from Hogan's Heroes, not not any of the big stars, but the the boss, you know. Right. Ding, that guy, it was him, and they would spend ten thousand dollars. They hire uh, her and him. Uh, at the beginning of the movie, he goes, "I killed your sister," and at the end of the movie, she kills him. It's yeah. And then the middle of the movie, it's a movie made in like Brazil or something, and I do all the guys going. Ugh, uh, uh. Anyway, <clears throat> it's a long story to get to. So I get hired to do Friday the Sixteenth Part Six. It already been shot, and. Uh, I get into the thing, and, and Tom McLaughlin, who's just a great guy, have you had him on the show? Yes, I actually interviewed him last week, actually. <laughs> oh, he's just a wonderful guy. Yes. Very good sense of humor. So this is absolutely true. So I'm doing all the male deaths. So I'm adding in extra noise. Like there's one where uh, Jason squeezes the guy's head and his brain pops out. I, if I may, I'd like to do that for you right now. Yeah. Okay. This is Jason squeezing the guy's head and a brain pops out. I'm not Jason, I'm the guy. <laughs> Thank you. Try the veal. Anyway. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, I try. So, I said to Tom, as we're doing this, because he's directing me on all the different deaths, I said, boy, my dream is to be brutally murdered in a film. And, you know, and I've done, already had done some films and TV and stuff. And we'd laugh and whatever. And, again, this is not a made-up story. So, the phone rings for Tom. Tom gets it, talks to somebody for a minute, and hangs up the phone. And he looks up at me and he goes, I've always wanted to do this. Kid, I want you in my picture. <laughs> <laughs> and Paramount had called and they said that there weren't enough deaths in the movie. Okay. That they had not enough Jason killings. So they gave him enough money to go to Griffith Park in Los Angeles and shoot uh, two more murders. Okay. Uh, me and Cindy as the couple and uh, the drunk. Um, uh, Martin the caretaker. Uh, um, uh, was it Martin? Uh, Michael, 
No, you're right. You're right. Yep. Yeah. So we had just the weekend to do it in Griffith Park. So it was my biggest thrill because I got to be murdered by Jason in a movie. And that's, uh, awesome. that's how I got the role. And as a result of there's more to this story, which I can tell you. But as a result of that story, uh, after doing it and everything, I then did um, uh, I had an audition for MTV VH1 as, an, as a VJ because okay. this was shot in 86, right? Yes. <clears throat> And in 87, I had this audition, and they said, tell us about your craziest job and audition. And I told that, and they hired me, and I became a VJ on VH1 for almost three years That's awesome. because of that story. That is awesome. Isn't that wild? That is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so when you did the voiceovers, did you do them during post-production, or like were you on set for any of them, them scenes, or like how did all that go down? No, all, all stuff was post-production okay. because the idea was they would have whoever was getting murdered and then they would do like really loser screams or or (laughs) death noises. And so then they'd bring me in. So as I said, uh, the movie had, was already in editing, but uh, Tom had to go and shoot these two scenes and we shot it in the park in the middle of the night. And we only had nighttime because we, you know, they couldn't get a permit for daytime. Right. I'm sure everyone's told you that the script never says Friday the 13th. I'm sure they told you what it says, right? Yes. uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Part five was. Aladdin Sin. That's it. Yes, that's it. Yeah, they, because they were afraid of being protested and things of that sort. Right. Um, I. I can... <laughs> so, what was it like working with Cindy? Oh, she's very nice. Very awesome. nice, and and like I said, she and I uh, were, you know, it was the middle of the night, so it was very uh, exhausting in that respect. But it was more, we were completely freaked. Uh, right. You know, when we got killed, because we could have really been shish kebab. Right. You know? So she and I both, and I got it first. No, did she get it first? No, you got, got it first, yep. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> so was, yeah. was there any, like, but practicing for that yeah. scene at all? Well, I told you, the, the, they, the problem is, is that because we were fighting daylight and the special effects, they just basically oh, had right. them try it once or twice between our arms. And right. they went, well, let's just do it. Right. Like, Praying for the best. <laughs> so, so there wasn't a lot of rehearsal for that because everything had to be, you know, we did all the stuff, the, the pre-stuff, but the murder was going to be the last thing we were shooting because of special effects. Right. And uh, and then there were no special effects except mm-hmm. for the, uh, which I thought was really cool. I never knew that, the, the clear... Uh, plastic sheet that they put in front of the camera that then you spit blood all over that was cool that's that's awesome um so the last question i got for you is uh do you have any future projects or anything else that you would like to promote to our listeners oh well there's just porno no i get <laughs> uh there's a new show called uh, there's a new show called broke on okay. uh, on cbs and uh i'll be i have a little thing on that next week okay and uh you hear me on CBS, speaking of which, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then mm-hmm. there's a cartoon coming out on Netflix uh, for little kids called Monkey with a Tool Belt. <laughs> and uh, I'm uh, uh, I'm uh, the ostrich and the sand crab. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, but it, for horror uh, fans, uh, I did all those really cool movies, uh, The you know, I, I mentioned to you. Reanimator, Return of the Reanimator, yeah. uh, Trolls. Um, I did all those, uh, those, and I put all the monsters and all the different uh, uh, alien voices of all those different things, and it was always a hoot. That's awesome. That is so awesome. And anybody that wants to find you, they can go. Is there anywhere that they can locate you and find out anything else that you're into after uh, this? In the alley? No. Uh, <laughs> RogerRose.com. That's no D. Don't put the D in there. RogerRose.com is where you can find it. Awesome. And then also, if you want to see what other uh, movies that he's in, post this interview. You can uh, find him on IMDb as well and see what else he's been up to. Uh, thank you, Roger, for your time. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure. And what's that behind you? <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you so much. And you have a nice rest of your day. Have a great weekend and stay safe. Okay, appreciate you thinking of me. Yep, not a problem. Thank you again. (laughs) Bye. Okay, bye. Bye.